Hi, welcome to Dear Art Producer. I am your host, Heather Elder, and in this unprecedented time, I want to continue the podcast and bring you the voices of the people on the front lines who can help us all better understand what's happening in our industry and how to better prepare for when we come back. Today is April 1st, and we welcome Renee Jung, VP Executive Art Producer at Area 23 in New York City. Renee is an award-winning art producer who began her career as a photographer, but realized being behind the scenes was more of her calling. She spent many years as a photo agent and producer to then find that the ad agency life was where she wanted to be. I'm guessing her dog Varney is by her side and I'm happy to have her home. Hi, Renee. Hi, how are you? Are you and Barney there? Barney's actually out and about on the street going for a walk right now. <laughs> That's great. What kind of dog is he? He's a, a little psycho Boston Terrier. Oh, very cute. Yeah. I have two um, English cream goldens who could not be happier that I have a so house full of kids here and they get more walks than they ever get. So <laughs> pretty, pretty a dog's life is definitely accurate. Well, why don't you start by telling us where you are right now? What's your setup like? What's happening in your world? Sure. So I'm currently set up in my tiny Brooklyn apartment. It's not the best scenario since it's a makeshift work from home type situation that I wasn't necessarily anticipating. So I've been working a lot from my dining room table and it's been difficult. I feel like I haven't really gone outside. I haven't really gone for a walk. I feel like it's been very interesting. You know, this doesn't get talked about a lot on the podcast um, and I don't really see a lot of other people talking too much about it, but the emotion that goes along with this. Yesterday, you know, my to-do list, you and I were talking about this earlier, like it was so long, but I I had to just check out at like 3.30. I, I think the emotion of it all, the pace of it all, I just had to just stop looking at the email, stop looking at my news and I needed to go upstairs and put on some bad TV and just <laughs> sit with it for a minute and just, I don't know, decompress or something. I just, I felt like I, my brain was short wiring or something and I, I needed to take some time for myself. Yeah. And I feel like that's so important because especially within this industry, it's kind of like a, it's a 24 seven nonstop job. So I feel more so now that I'm working from home, even though I was working from home before I wasn't going into a building every day, it just feels like you really need to learn how to turn it off because it just, it it won't come naturally once you leave the office. Yeah. And I especially think too, the way we're hardwired, right? We don't ever want to say no. You right. call me for a job and you have an estimate that needs to be done and you have all these different ways and I'm trying to figure it out and your client needs you to do something and you're trying to figure it out. So we want to figure out what the solutions are. And as we also talked about earlier, we also want to cross everything off our to-do list before we check out. And I feel like right now that's not really possible. Absolutely. I feel like there's now there's even more ways of people getting in contact with me with, with the work from home being such a new thing for obviously for our entire agency. People used to just do drive-bys whenever they needed something from me. They just come by my office and say, Hey, I have a question for you. But now it's, now there's 18,000 different ways of people (laughs) contacting me. And I'm like, I don't, I I can't, I can't keep up. It's too much. Yeah. So I know my email inbox is out of control and has never been more cluttered. And that has been a source of stress for me that I've had to learn to just not think about. I just have to do the best that I can. Right. Yeah. So hard. (laughs) Well, Well, let's talk a little bit about kind of the timeline of how things happened for you. You know, we're a little bit ahead of you here in California in terms of our shelter in place. Mm -hmm. And we've been working from home, you know, our office is, I mean, I work from home anyway, my office is here, but everyone else in my office has been working from home for a few weeks before, just kind of anticipation of this. And I know, you know, you guys probably started working from home before the shelter in place was put into place. Mm -hmm. What were you in the middle of in terms of productions and how did that look? What happened at that time? Yeah. So I was actually in the process of producing a photo shoot. 
it was a, a shoot that was supposed to happen the week, I believe, of the 16th. Uh, we were supposed to shoot March 17th and March 18th. And it was pretty nutty. It was pretty nutty timeline because we were trying to get everything sorted and figure everything out. And then one day I just got a, an email from my account person saying it's it's not going to happen. And it was the Friday before the shoot was supposed to happen. So imagine just stopping everything and figuring out how we're going to be able to pivot and what the next steps are. It was pretty crazy. I, I wasn't expecting it because at that point, studios weren't necessarily all shutting down yet. And I kind of felt like it was still quite early. And it was like early in the Friday on that Friday. So not everything was set in stone just yet. So being able to try to figure that out was difficult. Yeah. I mean, it was interesting on my end, we had multiple productions going on with many different photographers and, you know, one agency would be telling me one thing like, okay, let's talk about what it means to postpone this or cancel this, or how do we live stream this? So they'd all be in different points of production, right? Or different points in the process, not even just in production, just in the realization of what's happening. And I had some art producers saying, this is, no, we're going forward full steam ahead. As long as you're comfortable with it, you know, this is what we're going to do. And then the next day they'd be like, okay, all bets are off. <laughs> yeah. It was really minute to minute how things were changing. And it was interesting being on this side where I had so many different opinions coming at us. Right. Um, you know, but now we're at a complete standstill in terms of photo shoots and productions. How about you? Yeah. So when we received the notice from our client who early on in the stage, I made sure to inform them, Hey, just so we're aware of what we will need to anticipate in the next coming weeks, because we don't know if we're going to have a, a work from home situation. We don't know if anyone else on this team or anyone else um, from the production company is also going to be working from home. We have to be very cognizant of the fact that there's a chance that the shoot may not happen. But, you know, the client was like, we'll, we'll go through with it anyway. We, we need to make sure that this happens as soon as possible. And working in pharma, it's tough because we work with a lot of real patients. And after a certain point, I was like, I don't morally feel okay asking a production company, let alone a real patient, a patient who is immunocompromised, to step foot anywhere near a, a huge group of people. It's, it, it didn't feel right to me. So it was kind of like the client then after some time was they came around to and was like, okay, what is the next step in order for us to not move forward with this shoot and for us to be able to pivot into a different direction? It's unfortunate that we had such different direction from our leaders, from the president down to the governors, to the mayors, like each city was experiencing something different. So people on our production teams were in all different parts of the country, clients, agency people, crew. So some people were thinking that they were able to pull something off. And other people were starting to raise their hands and say, no, there's a civic responsibility here. We can't do anything. We should right. not be putting people together, never mind the talent whose immune systems are compromised. Right. You know, and I think as an industry, we did a really good job. I think at the same time, everyone kind of realizing, okay, this, this, especially once places like Chicago and all of California and New York, like we're on, you know, shelter in place. We, we can't in good conscience do this. Exactly. And as an interesting aside, we do have one photographer right now that's actually bidding a shoot to do in his house. He's living with his in-laws and his wife, who is a stylist and model, and his kids. And the concept is, they reached out to us for stock. And the concept is such that he was like, I could actually pull this off here at my house. Would they be interested? And we were like, I don't know, let's let's see. And they are interested. So we're kind of in the middle of, of estimating for that right now. But you know, they haven't left their house in a few weeks and they're gonna pull it off with whatever they have there and and see what they can do, you know, which I like in terms of a providing a solution for a client and nobody's going to be at risk. But that's such a unique situation, I think. Totally. And I feel like, you know, that's 
great. And I applaud this one photographer to be able to think in such a way that's kind of like, hey, I can actually I can actually make custom artwork and make it even more exciting and even more custom, like more tailored to what you're looking for. And I I I commend them because, you know, not everyone has those types of resources. So I mean, it was, you know, it's not something he's promoting saying. Right, hey, right, right. Exactly. It was like this situation came along um, by way of a stock image and he knew that he'd be able to pull it off. So we'll see. I'm not sure it hasn't gotten to <laughs> yet, but it was, right. it was an interesting solution. Yeah. Um, and I think that's great. And I do give him props for even thinking outside the box and being able to work with whatever scenario he's in. What are your clients asking of you right now? You know, are you pulling off productions in other ways? What do they need from you? So after my shoot got canceled, my CCO actually emailed the entire creative department and was like, we need to think of ways to create content that does not involve a shoot. So before even jobs now, nowadays have been touching the art production department for Area 23. Everything has already been, I guess, relayed to the client saying, hey, so we can't, we can't shoot. We're not going to put anyone in a situation where they're going to have to shoot. We need to move forward with a different solution, a different option. And this is the different ways we're thinking of potentially executing. What do you think? So we were actually able to kind of be able to hit that before the discussion of a photo shoot can even happen with an art producer. There are some projects that there were photo shoots in mind to execute, but we were like, we can't do that. We're going to have to figure out a different solution. And what are some of those solutions? Is it like CGI and illustration or all type or what, what are... Very, very heavy CGI requests, but there's been a lot of... 2D illustration requests. There's been a couple of stock requests. So I feel like everyone has been doing a really great job in terms of my creative department and trying to figure out best ways to make sure they're happy as well as um, client is being happy. And do you guys think that this, are you feeling like this is just a pause button on the productions that we do with, you know, photo shoot productions? Or are you thinking that things are going to change so drastically now that you've embraced other visual solutions and production might become complicated. I think it's definitely a pause button for sure. I feel like, you know, there's ways to which even though technology has become so advanced, especially nowadays, that even in CGI, you can't, you'll never really be able to capture anything in CG the way you can in photography. And especially with how things are lit, I feel like there's still, they've come a long way, but they still have a long way to go. Yeah. Yeah. What about marketing to you right now? You know, I, you and I talked about how many emails we're getting and it's hard to stay on top of them. When this first happened, I was laughing because I'm like, literally everyone's at their computer. Everybody's emailing at the same time. <laughs> like nobody's off on a shoot or on an airplane or somewhere that they can't get to their email. Like everyone's doing it at the same time. So, you know, I'm sure that's one of the biggest ways that people are marketing to you. But what do you think about that? Do you think that there's inappropriate messages, appropriate messages? Do you not want the emails? I guess it depends on the approach. I feel like when it comes with a very heartfelt message, but also having the understanding that the world doesn't stop and we still need to be producing content, I think that's a great way to approach someone such as myself because I've been getting a lot of emails that say, hey, insert name here. Yeah. <laughs> what can, like, what can we do to help you during this time of crisis? And I'm like, well, that for starters, don't send an email like that. <laughs> um, and second of all, you know, it's like you're not you're not really presenting me a solution for anything. 
and it seems very cold and seems like you're just trying to use this opportunity to make a buck. And everyone is, is affected differently by this um, pandemic. Yes, that is true. But I feel that there's always a sensitivity that should be utilized when, when reaching out to someone. And I feel like it's, it's, it's all about making sure you're, you're, you're sensitive to that. You know, I had a conversation with a studio manager today about, we had sent out this email for selling prints at a reduced rate and to raise money for assistance. So they were, Tim Tatter started it. It was selling a hundred prints for a hundred dollars each to raise $10,000. And they needed to sell like four more prints and they were going to meet their goal. And she was like, Hey, will you promote this for me? And my immediate thought was, yeah, sure. Of course I'll promote this for you. Let me send out an email. Sure. And I thought, you know what? We already sent out an email about this. You only need to send, sell four more prints. You're going to sell them. So I don't need to take up the email space mm-hmm. that I'm going to take up later on with something else, with something I've already promoted. So how about we just promote it on social? So, you know, people are choosing to be interrupted because they're going to go on my Facebook page or LinkedIn or Instagram or something. And they'll, <laughs> as right. opposed to me interrupting your day with another request from you. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think we need to constantly think about, you know, what we're sending out and is our messaging appropriate? You know, we pivoted right away and all of our messaging became solutions oriented. And rather than promoting some cool work that someone has done, we're promoting their, the collections of images that they have that are available for purchase. So either you can use it for stock or you can create a campaign around knowing that these images are available. And that to me felt like the most appropriate messaging rather than, hey, look at this cool shot somebody took. Don't you like it? And I, you know, it's been received positively, but it still takes up, you know, email space. Of course. Yeah. And don't get me wrong. I, every email that comes through from any reps or photographers, I always try and try being the operative word. I try to go through every single one of those emails, just because I know how much hard work and effort and just, I guess, guts it takes to reach out to someone that you don't know and to be able to cold call someone in that sense, it's really difficult. And I I do try and go through as many of those as possible. And I think that either way, you know, we're in crisis or we're not, I feel like, you know, similar sensitivity comes with sending out those those types of emailers just because you don't want to rub anyone the wrong way ever. So I think, you know, it's important that everyone still sends those out. So they're like, oh, hey, you know, this is a cool image. But at the same time, it's kind of like, know your audience and know, know the, the types of situations everyone is in at the moment. Absolutely. And I just think, I think the conversation around it is a good one because I get lots of emails from people. And when I sat on the webinar for the workbook, people were writing in questions about, you know, they're worried about what's appropriate and what isn't. And, you know, just having them hear you say what you just said, hear Dawn say the other day on the webinar, you know, challenging me saying, well, I don't think they all need to be solutions oriented. Heather, I like, I like when I get the pretty image that comes into my inbox, you know, it's like a little bit of of a breath of fresh air. So I think people are so parallel, at least in the beginning, I feel like there's a little bit more sense of calm right now, but we're so paralyzed by what to do, what not to do. And, you know, having you, you know, give a little bit of guidelines like that, I think is really helpful. Yeah. And Dawn's awesome. And I love that she said that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I know we need to have a, um, a Zoom party or a house party or something. Yes, with all these <laughs> absolutely. There's so many of us. So it's going to have to be a, a Zoom type party where there, you can fit a lot of people in uh, one chat. Exactly. <laughs> what sort of things or advice can you give a photographer about how, like taking this time to do some housekeeping items? Like what are things that would be important for you to have them work on during this time? Oh, I feel like... I feel like this is a great opportunity to reflect and take a look at 
your own work and see if there's anything different that you want to be doing or something new, if there is a, a, or even put together a test that you feel like, you know, you want to be able to shoot once we're out of this and being able to maybe revamp your website. Like, I feel like there's so much awesome work that photographers could be doing right now and without the distraction of client work. And me personally, whenever I present photographer or any, any artist's work to any of my creatives, it's, it's typically personal work that always I, my eye always gravitates towards just because it's part of who that artist is. Uh, not so much coming from the brain of a, of a creative. So I think it's, it's, it's a good time. And I know we're all so worried about what the future holds. I think that this is great because who knows when we'll be able to have this type of time to be able to really think and reflect on how our career is moving and how, if there's any changes or if there's anything different you want to potentially be doing. I do agree with you. I think, and I've said this before, but we, as a community, as an industry, as a society, we were operating at a pace that just wasn't sustainable. And it's such an important time to hit the pause. I mean, the pause button has been hit for us. <laughs> take right. time and reflect on who we want to be, what we want to become, what, what do we want our industry to look like? You know, what are we valuing in our industry? So now, you know, we're all in the same boat. So what kind of changes for the good can we affect? And how can we take care of the people who, who are in our industry? Right. And I think in order to do that, we have to kind of get away from our to-do list and really find more time to be reflective on this. Exactly. And I think it's, I know everyone feels like because of shoots canceling or being postponed or, you know, not getting any calls and not working, I feel like, yeah, these are real real things that are happening that is affecting our careers. But at the same time, we don't want to lose sight of, of what's important. And I think that this is a great opportunity for any artist, not just photographers to be able to look at their websites or look at or reevaluate what's going on with them currently and see if there's any changes or anything interesting that they could potentially be doing. And when do we ever have time? to do that. We don't. Oh, God. Yeah. All the time. Um, okay. Let's take a minute to talk a little bit about, and you might not, you know, have had conversations like this yet in your group, but the future of productions, you know, there's so many conversations happening out there right now about terms and conditions and safety on set and multiple people on set. And is there going to be a transition time and are, you know, can we gather in large groups, all of that. I mean, there's so much that we don't know mm -hmm. either. But, you know, what are your teams coming to you saying, are, do you think we're going to be able to do this? I feel like in terms of the future of productions, the conversations really haven't been coming up too often just because everyone is so optimistic about the future of shoots and the future of productions that it hasn't really been thought about too much. And which is good. I'm, I'm really glad that, you know, they're not really thinking about that, but at the same time, it, it, it might mean more work for the producer or the photographer, just because it's something that we will have to then take into consideration. But I don't think that a whole lot will change. My fingers are crossed, obviously, that um, not a whole lot is going to change, just because it can't. If we can't gather and do a shoot and be able to work out those processes, then it's going to be extremely difficult. And though I'm not a huge fan of doing remote shoots, it's something that could be a possibility, but I feel like for the most part, the people that I work with are, are not for it either. Cause you know, you see something on a screen, it's not never going to translate the same in no. a shoot and in, in like a, in an image. I think um, everybody's so curious what the future will look like. And as I said earlier, we still have experiences that we have to have in order to right. inform what the future will look like to see what we need. And I think there's this race to, and it, it's not a race like one person's going to win or not. I just mean, 
like there's a lot of conversation around remote shooting and live streaming and what does that look like in studio? What does that look like on location? Where I think what needs to be part of that conversation Mm -hmm. is we do not want to lose sight of the importance of onset collaboration and all of us being there together. So if we can't do that, then what are the solutions? But I feel like people are jumping to the solution and leaving out the part of the conversation. Because if we just jump to that, the clients are going to want to do that. And we're going to set precedents. We just have to be careful about how quickly we move towards something without the conversation about what we're leaving behind. Because it's such an integral part of what we do. I mean, it's a positive to have remote shooting. Absolutely. And it's a positive to be able to live stream from, you know, when we can't do other things. But we just have to be be careful to how do we keep that collaboration alive and that that creativity going. It's hard. Yeah, for sure. And I've done a few, quite a few remote shoots before, and it's just not the same. And I never, and when I say never, I mean, you know, maybe sometimes I, I recommend to a client that we can do a remote shoot, but I, I never, for the most part, recommend it just because that face-to-face time. And as you were saying, that onset collaboration is key to a photo shoot going well or even a video shoot I think it's kind of like um working from home you can do it yes 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 you get it all done but it's very different and it's it's a different sense of collaboration and different time is spent on different stuff so you know I'm all for having the solution and I'm and I mean it's not anything new we've all done it before even before this right and so we, everybody knows how to do it and there's no proprietary technology or anything. So I tell my photographers, like, be ready, make sure you know how to do this and you've got the equipment and like, you can answer the questions and do it. But let's also talk about the collaboration that might right. not be able to happen and how can we make up for that somehow? So. I don't know. Yeah. And let's just hope that future is soon. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's, I, I'm actually working, I've been bidding out a job for a, a few weeks now for a, quite a long time. And we've been doing creative calls and doing triple bids and, and having conversations with client. And I, I feel like every single time I follow up being like, Hey, so just curious, was there any discussion on like what kind of, what photographer we're we're interested in working with? Because I want to give some feedback to the reps and to the artists, being like, "Hey, we are still talking about it. We're still trying to figure it out because I don't think it's right to make someone feel like they're still up for a job that could potentially happen in." August or even September, but then not really give them that closure. So, I mean, yes, it's still a possibility, but it's also like, I just, I don't, I don't want to keep talking about it. I just want to figure out what photographer you're interested in because it doesn't take this long to figure out what photographer you want to work with. Three people on the hook right now. Yeah. You know, wouldn't it be great to just have that one person that you can have your conversations with? Yeah. Well, it's, I think it's hopeful for the people who are listening to know that you're still, you know, talking to photographers about stuff. We got a phone call today or an email today from someone who's interested in a shoot for the fall. And it was, you know, one of his dream clients. So that was a cool thing. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it was cool. So I feel like for people who are listening, you know, while everything is definitely at a standstill from a production point of view, except for these unique little cases of, mm-hmm. you know, photographers shooting all, all by themselves in their live work space or this particular photographer who's using his family. I am hearing things and there's rumblings for the future. So, you know, this is definitely, if we all handle it right and we stay home and we do our part, right. yeah. hopefully we'll get back to normal sooner rather than later. Exactly. Um, mm-hmm. 100% in agreement with you on that, for sure. And how about Barney? Is Barney back? <laughs> I don't know. He hasn't checked in on me yet, so we'll see where he is. 
Well, um, I definitely am going to want to see a picture of Barney, please. So. Absolutely. I have a lot of them. Okay, good. I'm sure <laughs> I can give you one of Fenway and Teddy, too. Oh. So. All right. Well, this was really wonderful, Renee. Thank you so much for your time and your insights and your friendship. I hope you are surrounded by everyone and everything you need right now. And please know that what you've done today here is really valuable and very much appreciated. So thank you. Of course, anytime and anything to help give back and to help these photographers in any which way possible. You know, I'm also like, I'm also here just for any types of questions whatsoever. So, um, yeah. All right. Well, try and get out for a walk if you can. <laughs> I'll try. Uh, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. See you later. <laughs>